Today's MMA Tea Company Fighter Spotlight is with Kayla Yontev. Kayla is a 1-0 professional fighter coming off of a win at Invicta 44 for her pro debut. Kayla, thanks for joining us today. Congrats on the win. Um, how are you feeling? It looks pretty sunny, pretty happy out there wherever you are. Yeah, I'm in Albuquerque right now. The weather is nice. We're currently taking a uh, big King coconut, the one, the myth, the legend on a walk. So I'm just keeping him in eyesight. He's uh, located to the lizard. So I think he'll be preoccupied for a good amount of time. But yeah, even when you just said like one and oh, as a pro, like goosebumps, man. Like it's so crazy to me that um, where I've come from and like, just, you know, where I am. And I don't know, it's, it's crazy too, because I know, that it's just the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the beginning phrase is all pro by no means where I plan to stop. So, but it's, it's you know, it's so crazy just how, how far I've come and like to have pro next to your name, like that's pretty insane. Uh, cool. Like I'm a professional, like in, in fighting, like that's crazy, cool, <laughs> so cool. So is that something that's, you know, set in yet? Is it something that, uh, you know, you were looking towards this kind of feeling of having a win as a pro and now it's here, you know, how does that feel? What does your, what is your mindset like now and the week after the fight? It's so strange because it's not like anything changed overnight, right? Like, um, I think for me, I have a, a, a good amount of anxiety when it comes to fighting and I have a good amount of you know a healthy amount of anxiety um and uh I have a healthy amount of just kind of you know that kind of who I am and who I want to be in the sport and all that kind of stuff and nothing you know no imposter syndrome went away overnight the the satisfaction from having a really great fight really didn't even come in mm -hmm. um and of course, like, yeah, satisfied, like I'm happy for sure, but it's like, it didn't, I don't know. It's always so weird because whenever I fight and I know a lot of fighters do this, not just me, I'm not a weirdo. Everyone does this, right? A little pro tip into the fighter's mind. The last week, you kind of act like your fight is your death. Like you're like, I know I'm dying on this day. Like I was like shopping for food on fight week and I wasn't even like, checking the expiration date so I'm like I only got seven days left to live I don't I don't care when these eggs go bad I'm not gonna live to see that like I got like someone's like what do you want to do for Halloween this year and I'm like bro don't you know I'm dying October 27th what's wrong with you why are you trying to make plans with me on Halloween you know it's just um that kind of stuff and then you always have that little culture shock when you come back and it's just like, oh, I'm still, fighting's not a big deal. Like it is, you know, it really is such a big deal, but it's also just not a big deal at all at the end of the day, right? And in, in the context of everything else. Um, and that's just, you know, kind of the balancing act, right? Of just really, really caring so much about this sport, being willing to die for it, but also like chill out, have fun. It's not a big deal. No one actually cares, right? I know all my friends and family and coaches would still love me, even if I went out there and got knocked out in two seconds, right? Um, they would want me to win, but, you know, nothing nothing changes, you know? So I guess nothing changed, but also everything changed, right? So that's been great. <laughs> Yeah. And it's one of those things that when you're preparing for the fight and like you, you know, you sign that contract and you sign on the dotted line, it is that thing that's not even always in the back of your head. It is always in the forefront. I can't do this because I have training. I can't do this because I have the fight. I can't do this. All right. I can, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. Now that the fight has ended, is it a relief for you? Is it something where you're kind of missing something in your life that you just had like as that constant mental, uh, like it's always stuck in your brain kind of thing? Or, you know, what is that? Um, you know, you talked about it. It's you're like going into your death, but now here you are, you know, you didn't die. So um, is there something, is there something missing? Are you relieved now that that's over? 
yeah, for sure. I think after every fight, there's just so much relief just because it's like, I'll start my fight camp before I get a fight. And it's like, I could fight tomorrow. I'm so in shape. I'm fucking training hard. I feel so good and sparring, this and that. And then you get the fight and you're like, ah! and then you kind of reach the midway through your camp and you're like, okay, I can fight tomorrow. Everything is good. My weight's on point. I'm doing this and that. Everything is in action. And then you get to those last like three weeks and you're just like, ah! again right like there's always you know just so much going on and all of that and then about a week out you get to this phase where you just are tired you just don't (laughs) care anymore it's just like I can't scream anymore I'm not really excited anymore I just want it to be done with you know like I've done it I've done my best here's the result let me fucking turn in this homework right the homework's done you know, instead of going through it and being like, I need a period here and a comma here. And let me just see if I can rewrite this a certain different way. It's like the homework is done. Take it. Mm-hmm. Give me my grade back, you know? Um, and I think maybe in the past, I used to get a little bit sad after fights just because you do build it up so much in your head and the fights never, never goes the way you, you mm-hmm. see it. There's, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be like, that was a good job. You know, like, and of course it is, um, but, um, you know, I think I used to struggle a lot more with the coming down part now, and now I kind of just feel very level in everything I do, and I really think that's a sign for me that I was ready to make that professional debut, is I, I don't engage in those kind of emotional roller coasters anymore, right? The ones that fighting can bring, the one that fights can bring, right? Um, you know, like, the girl I fought, she's she's very good at uh, grappling, was super surprised that she was, you know, able to get guard and, you know, just last so long and just um, be there, right? Just her willingness to just win. Like I knew just by facing off with her and such and kind of her, her attitude and her vibe a little bit, I'm like, okay, like you're gonna be, um, you're gonna be one of those like tough cookies, right? Um, but not engaging with the emotion that she was bringing to the table, right? Not taking things personally, not making it into a fight, but making it into a competition, right? Not even looking at her as my opponent, but just my competitor, the same way, you know, all those other ladies on that card were. And uh, it was just, I don't know, uh, not engaging in those emotional roller coasters. Instead of looking at it like this is my death and now I'm suddenly alive appreciate that right like I went out there ready to die or whatever and now I'm back and I have a second chance at life right or a second chance to get better right like um you know like I I really hate it when fighters win and then they're like well, I wanted to do this and that and I'm so disappointed and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not fucking doing that. Like, I'm glad I won. Like, fuck yeah. Awesome. Good job. But I take satisfaction in knowing that there's holes in there that I'm excited to fix, right? Like, like taking an airplane on a test ride and being like, okay, I made it through the sky. Like I flew, but here's how I can do better. And you know, just learning everything from that, right? Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, the excitement I had for dying in a fight is now the excitement I feel for getting better so I can die a little harder next time. And, you know, you had, you had mentioned it's a, it's a mentality shift of, you know, being in a competition is, and you've been fighting since I believe 2018 was your first fight. Um, before that, you know, going back to early Kayla, were you in martial arts as a kid? Were you uh, always a competitive person? Did you have a, like a fighter's mentality uh, when you were younger? Or how, how did you get into the sport? Literally the exact opposite. I know when I went to Invicta, I heard them uh, announce this story about me doing karate when I was little. And it's true. 
I did do a free program at karate, but I did it for two weeks and then uh, I quit because the story like they were telling was they were doing belt promotions and all that stuff. And I got, you know, I was, I, I, I don't know if you know, but I used to be a very big kid at one point, you know, almost 400 pounds, right? Like just, um, and even back then, so I was a really big kid, but it was a free karate program and I loved it. I instantly fell in love. I loved the uniforms. I was a little fat kid. So I was wearing an adult gi, but like it went down past my hands and I'd be like, look at me. I'm like, I'm in pajamas. I'm like, a, I'm like a, sum I'm like a samurai. Look at me. Um, but since I was so big and we did belt promotions, they had us do sparring and they put me with this very advanced, small, small girl. And I remember just being so envious of her, even at that age, because she had both her parents there and she was very athletic and she was good. And she walked around with that confidence that I wanted. Um, but, and of course she, you know, kicked my ass as much as you can kick your ass in like kids sparring, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they had us all close our eyes, sitting against the wall, and they were going to raise the hands. You know, if you think so-and-so get, should get promoted, raise your hand and all that stuff. And so, of course, I'm like, you know, <laughs> peeking on through and such. And um, no one raised their hand for me, including, like, my, my dad at the time. But everyone, including my dad at the time, you know, raised their hands for her. And I just remember being so discouraged and being like, okay, well, I'm not good enough for this, so let me quit before I embarrass myself again, right? Um, so I quit karate like instantly at two weeks. And besides that, you know, I really have zero experience until I was 18, where I just started, you know, coming out of my shell, losing weight. And I, uh, my, my dad had been arrested at that time. So it was really kind of a new beginning of my life and I realized just how much I was missing out on right and all these different things that I just didn't do even though I might have been interested in them you know just because of other people right mm -hmm. and MMA was one of those so uh I got started I went into a you know, a little kickboxing gym right that was like cardio kickboxing and I would stare at the Muay Thai class every time because they were at the same time. And I'd be like, one day I'm going to, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go in there one day and I'm going to do Muay Thai. And finally I got the confidence to, I'm still about 250 at this time, weight wise, maybe heavier. And I go in there and they're like, oh, no, no, Muay Thai is on Wednesdays and Thursdays. This is Friday. This is, this is jujitsu. And I was so anxious at that time that instead of being like, oh, well, this is the wrong class. Sorry, I didn't want to do this. I, I wasn't able to say that and walk out. So instead, I did the next thing that brought me the second amount of anxiety, which was like rolling with a bunch of sweaty men on the ground. Um, so I really kind of kind of got in a position accidentally where I really was like forced into it. Right. And by the, you know, like, I don't know, not even the end. By like 20 minutes in, I was like, oh, I love this. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I I just knew, like, I wouldn't say it for a little while, but I knew at that moment, I'm like, I want to be a professional fighter, man. Like, this is so cool. This is, it just feels so good in my soul. It's not a discipline thing. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, yeah, sure. You can, there's elements of MMA that I'm disciplined in. Um, cause I have to be like making weight or cardio, whatever, but ultimately the reason I'm going to the gym right now after a fight isn't because I'm like some like disciplined, like I'm going to get, I'm going to be the best. It's cause I, I miss it and it's fun. And it's what I want to do. And, uh, also I'm going to move cause the sun is going to murder me. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's try this. Boom, boom. Okay, no murder. Perfect, perfect. You feel the um, heat on my, face, my skin, and I was like, "All right, we gotta gotta get out there." Instead. Yeah. All right. Um, so it, you you walk into the gym, right? You start training, but training jujitsu and Muay Thai, and then 
taking your first fight right in there you there had to be conversations with coaches and and different things so um how did you go from you know that that young girl in the oversized gi who in two weeks said oh this is too hard i want to quit to the girl who just couldn't couldn't walk out of the jujitsu gym and just ended up staying to the girl that then is like i want to fight in the cage like where where did you develop that i guess confidence and that um that drive to to want to fight in the cage um to be honest if i could like spell it out like this is what i did i i you know it's like so much of this is just my perspective and ultimately too i think i hate to say this but a lot of it fucking comes down that i was lucky mm -hmm. i was so lucky you know tyson lord was my original coach and he put in so much love into me and he you know respected even though i wasn't athletic i was you know really terrible at, at everything. <laughs> I was really terrible at everything. He respected that I came to classes and loved it. And he invested in me. And he's the one that was like, hey, you know, you used to try this jujitsu gym in town. And hey, you know, if you really want to take this seriously, Kayla, you should head down to Jackson Wink. You know, it's mm -hmm. eight hours away. Like you need to go, you know. And uh he did my like my first smoker with me, my first Muay Thai. And then I left to go to Jackson's and um, he's cornered me twice since then. And so he's been a really big role model. And I have an amazing mom, you know, who's been very supportive of me. Right. She she has her, you know, she went she's so cool because she went from a woman who was, you know, abused and and such to like a woman who owns her own investigation companies and helps you know, find missing kids and people in similar boats. So she's really been a hero and example for me. And, um, you know, yeah, I can't really mark one, but I really do think a lot of it comes down to luck, you know, luck and privilege. And, you know, just the fact that I was in high school at the time too, and I could just come in whenever I wanted and have a mom so I didn't have to pay rent at you know at home at the time and it, a lot of it just came down to luck and just a love of the sport you know but I want to say luck because I know so many people will love this sport and will invest just as much as I do but they're not so lucky they have to work two jobs or they get an ACL blowout on their first day you know like um there's just so many variables and I can't be like this, this, and this, and I'm, you know, and I'm just so special that I managed to make it out. And uh, no, 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 it's a lot of it's luck and that's unfortunate, but hopefully that's something that, you know, I can change and other people can change, you know, with the stuff that I've been given, you know, just use it to build build a bigger table i would really love to start a martial arts you know free program for kids and all that kind of stuff i mm -hmm. think every martial artist probably dreams of doing stuff like that so but yeah tyson said you know go out to jackson so i came out here in uh 2019 without any mma experience or mma fight experience and um yeah, day one, Joey Vila Senor really took me under his wing. And Andrew Tennyson, who's, you know, I would consider my head coach now, along with Joey, uh, just from day one, he took me under his wing. And, you know, the thing that's cool about a place like Jackson Wink is just, it is what you make it into, right? If you show up and you're a student of the game, you know, you will just learn so much. And there's always someone around who's willing to teach you if you're willing to learn, right? I know Andrew would just like, oh my God, it's stuff that's fucking ridiculous, man. Like I wish you would just go home sometimes because I'm like, you have a wife and like she misses you, dude. Like, but he'll just like talk about MMA at the gym with people, with people who are brand new to the gym, you know, mm -hmm. people who are gonna leave in two weeks. And he's like, let me show you how you can, you know, get better at this and this. And let's have a conversation about the art of war and how it relates to like 
MMA and the fight game and this stuff. And so, you know, it, it's unfortunate to hear if you're looking for like advice on how to do it. But a lot of it was just luck along with willingness, you know? Um, so that's unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. Yes, it is. And it all uh, seems to be working out for you so far. And you've had a, a pretty meteoric rise, you know, in MMA uh, going from your first fight uh, in, in May of 2018, uh, undefeated through your amateur career, and then, you know, a finish in Invicta in your first pro fight. Um, now, Invicta being, you know, I would say the premier all-women's promotion in the world, what was that like going from, you know, fighting on these uh, pretty regional MMA cards uh, to, you know, the bright lights of a pro debut in Invicta? Um, well, that's the thing too, is like, I think that's really like Invicta was awesome. Like I had high expectations because obviously I have a lot of teammates who have fought for them. Mm -hmm. And so they told me what to expect and they've, you know, and that's the cool thing about being at Jackson wing too. It's like, yeah, for sure. I can become a cool martial artist for sure. I can become a better fighter, mm -hmm. but the lessons I've learned about the fight game from people like Michelle and Holly and how to hold yourself, right? How to talk to people, right? How to talk into a microphone, what you want to say, you know, those kind of things are just so, they've prepared me for that more than, you know, m more than I think a lot of things could have. And so I think I was very much so ready for those cameras and lights and, dealing with those kind of things because I have people at the gym that I can ask about it and get advice from and whatever mistakes they made, hopefully I won't make them and I can make my own new mistakes. Right. And, um, so really just be willing to learn about the fight game itself as well as how to fight. Right. Was a really big key for me. Um, and Victor really went beyond my expectations. Mm -hmm. Like it was fucking, it was, you know, and me like, I fought for some very good amateur promotions, but I've also had my fair share of butt fuck Wisconsin and, um, you know, fights in the Hooters parking lot. Right. So it's pretty amazing. Just that jump in professionalism. It was like, fuck, I could text Angie and I would get a reply in five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and they wanted to fix, you know, they wanted to make me comfortable. It was like, it it was like, it felt like they were like passionate people making a piece of art together. Of course, it's a fight promotion. Of course, it felt like a fight, but mm -hmm. it's like their attention to detail, not just about me, but on every other fighter was, you know, and that's always a red flag. Like they treat you good, but no one else like, hmm, but they treated everyone so good. Everyone you know, was picked up from the airport at such a great time. We all got to pick our own tickets, even if it meant like I was on Southwest and a lot of the other fighters were American and some of the other fighters were like on United. And, but we all got the times that we asked for, which mm -hmm. is insane. And the hotel was beautiful. And, you know, the media day was so much fun and like it felt like they were making art and we were all the art and you know it just it it felt so clean also again because I'm at this gym I get to talk to people about their experiences and different organizations and how it felt and compared to a lot of the things I've heard Invicta just felt so genuine and so clean and everyone there was just like they brought mats. They did things I didn't even think about. They were like, hey, you know, this is for just you buying food, like for you and your coach. Like, it's like, I didn't expect that. Like, mm -hmm. that's fucking awesome. Here's some mats you can take to your room. They're super lightweight and super nice. Fuck yeah, dude. Hey, you like weigh-ins started early. Weigh-ins never start early. <laughs> never. I got to eat before I thought I would be able to eat. Do you know how amazing that is? Um, but yeah, you know, just like open scoring was another thing, like, especially for females. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one thing if 
some fucking idiot online is like, well, you shouldn't have not let it go to the referees or to the judges, mm -hmm. <laughs> to the referees. Hi, I'm an MMA fighter. At least I was <laughs> pretending to be stupid, right? So it's okay. But you shouldn't have let it go to the judges. Like, okay, it's one thing if you're a fucking heavyweight mm -hmm. and it takes this to knock someone out. But the smaller and the smaller females, the less and less that's going to happen. If I get a finish, it's going to be a TKO on the ground or a submission or, or, you know, potentially I have knockout power. We'll see. Maybe someday. Um, but in general, for women, it's far, it's, we go to the decision so much more. And so having the power to kind of know where we're at and to uh, have judges that are on point is just so, so important. Mm -hmm. So I love open scoring. I love the way they ran everything. Everything was so professional, so organized. They gave me so much in terms of, you know, pictures and media and, and, you know, stuff I can promote myself with in the future, even if I didn't work with Invicta again. They have an open contract, so technically I can go wherever I want. I have that freedom, which is a big reason why I signed with them in the first place. But um, why would I want to, you know? They treated me so good. Uh, they, you know, it's it's unfortunate too because I got paid equal to, I won't say Hugh, but a very well-known, respected MMA fighter who I think is one of the best in the world at the gym, right? He got this crazy submission in his last fight and I got paid equal to that from, and, and it's just, it's great. And it, my, my debut, you know? Um, so Invicta really does just treat their fighters so good. And it's, um, it, it went beyond my expectations. I, I don't see myself fighting, maybe like something local, just cause that'd be cool. But otherwise it's like, oh my gosh, Invicta put the, bo the bar too high. Like nothing can compare. Uh, and speaking of, you know, fighting for them again or, or whatever comes next, do you have, um, anything on the schedule are you looking to get right back in the cage do you like to take some time off you know what's next for you um well there's definitely some some holes in my game that i want to work on on the on the ground there's a few things that you know like i said uh mm -hmm. bites supplement my training not vice versa gym and make sure my little airplane is all patched up and has some new tricks and such and that might take a month maybe a month and a half but other than that I'm looking to get in there again as soon as possible for sure um I would like I said in the fight I would love to fight uh the other Chandler sister just yeah. because I think that would you know I don't know it's a it's a story it's interesting obviously I'll fight you know anyone right I think all fighters do but um, to give a story, to give a name, I think always helps and always makes fans a little bit more interesting, right? Or interested in it, which I think, you know, for me and for them is important for our careers. Um, but yeah, obviously I'll, I would love to, you know, anyone, um, I was even dabbling with going down to 135 just because I feel like there is so much. I feel like there's a lot of competition at 145 and there are a lot of girls there, but they're just not realizing quite yet that I think Invicta can be a good place for them. Um, but but I would love to featherweight tournament. I think tournaments are just so cool, uh -huh. especially the Invicta ones. I want to go in one so bad. So that would be dope. But yeah, I mean, being in camp versus just being out of camp, like I said, I love training. It's what I like to do. So the only thing I really change when I go into fight camp is um, I take more of my coach's time. <laughs> um, and so I make him work harder for me. And then I also just diet a little bit more like uh, writing it down more, you know, being a little mm -hmm. more aware of like, calories and such and then I just really kind of really try to drive home that cardio right because nothing else works if you don't have good cardio and that's something in this fight I felt like my cardio was the best it's ever been and I was having a full-on conversation with Andrew in the corner and I felt ready to go another three rounds and um 
yeah so so really you know greg jackson has really been helping me with that conditioning and just making sure like i do all the suffering in the gym you know mm -hmm. or as much as it as i can right and then i suffer a little bit in the cage too but i'm so used to suffering at that point that's just kind of normal right um but yeah, so that's really all that changes. So I'd be down to take a fight at, at, you know, the drop of a hat too. So I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. There's, you know, there's so much I wanted to fix and there's so much I know I can do better on and, and the performance anxiety of all, all of it, you know, like, cause fighting is terrifying, right? Fighting so scary. Like I'm backstage and I'm like, Fuck, I don't want to do this. This is crazy. I'm about getting this adult fucking jumping castle and and like suddenly like people can hit me and not go to like jail. Like, fuck, man, this is scary. Um, so I I want more. I want I want to do it better because I know I can do it better and I want to do that as soon as possible, but it's your professional career, so I'll be smart about it. And um Lucky for me, I have people around me get like Chad, right? At Sucker Punch and he can be smart for me. Um, but yeah, just keep on getting better. Keep on trucking. Awesome. We're looking forward to you getting better. Uh, hopefully you can at least take this week off from uh, suffering before you jump right back into the gym. Um, you know, looking forward to that next fight and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for, thanks for coming in today. Thank you. I really appreciate it and everything you guys do. Awesome. Let's... We appreciate you too. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. You guys want to see coconut real quick? Okay. Let's see him. And there you go. Okay. Coconut, say hi to the people. Nope. All right. <laughs> so that was it. Bye All guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye.